Welcome everybody, my name is Johann Kempfle and I will talk about detecting user respiration from environmental depth cameras. As a motivation, respiratory rate is an important vital parameter and is for example tracked for sports and many medical applications. Here on the right side you see for example normal breathing and different types of abnormal breathing. Current solutions, uh, however, usually require on-body sensor devices like a respiration belt, something you put on the nose, or a mask-like spirometer. Can we do better? Yes, we can use depth cameras to estimate the respiratory rate from a distance. But how can we do this? How can we obtain a valid respiration signal? Well, we start with the depth data and um, extract the joint positions and use these joint positions to select a region like for example the chest. And with the pixel inside this region, we can then, for example, from a principal component analysis, compute the mean or the median. And in our case, we simply average all pixels. And yes, we obtain a respiration signal. With the help of a Fourier analysis, we then furthermore can uh, extract the respiratory rate. So here in green, we have um, the ground proof frequency. And the red dashed line on top is the dominant frequency detected by our, by our method. Okay, so does it always work? Here we have different users at different distances of 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, and 4 meter. And yes, we obtain a valid respiration signal that gets a bit more noisy towards higher distances. Okay, problem solved, right? Well, now this user is standing now. And standing seems to introduce motion artifacts, like for example keeping balance. And these motion artifacts interfere with the respiration signal, so we do not obtain such a clear respiration signal as before. Also, when you look at the frequency domain, we do not have a distinct peak here at the ground proof frequency, and the estimated respiratory rate jumps around. So, we cannot simply apply a filter to this signal because we do not know the respiratory rate and we do not know the rate of the movements. So what can we do now? Well, maybe we can subtract the motion signal. But how do we do this? Let's see. Here on the left side I have plotted the depth data and on the right side the variance among many frames. And in red uh, I indicate low variance and in green high variance. And on the whole body surface, you see the, a mixture of the respiration signal and the motion. So, where can we extract the motion component from? Um, obviously, here on the body surface, we have wrinkles, a belt, some cloth hanging from the chest, or a collar that moves strongly and will distort the signal. So, this regions are not very reliable and they can be anywhere on the body surface. What else do we have? Yeah, here at the throat you see that there is no clothing and furthermore this region is barely affected by respiration. So why not take uh, a certain percentile of these pixels here to um, reduce the motion signal? Let's see how it works. So we again compute the mean of the chest region and subtract the 90th percentile of the pixels here throughout. And as you can see, we have a clear respiration signal again. And uh, in the frequency domain, we have a clear peak at the ground truth frequency, and uh, every other component is comparably low. Great, problem solved. But um, does it work for all users? Let's see. Okay, why is this user drinking now? Look at the signal. The self occlusions cause large spikes in the signal, and in frequency domain, we cannot see the respiratory rate anymore at all. Okay, so let's uh, start from scratch and do it right. So we need to handle noisy data, we need to detect and handle motion artifacts, we need to detect and reject occlusion in outlier pixels, we need to recover these occluded parts. And we need to adapt to surface deformation caused by clothing or soft tissue deformation. So let's use an adaptive model to 
show you what I'm thinking of. I saw a short video where we have the input frames, we kind of select the window position and compute an occlusion mask. We have a stage called occlusion recovery, update our model, and then we get an occlusion free and smooth body region from which we can extract the aspiration signal from. And we have a clear dominant frequency at the aspiratorial rate. Okay, let's start with the model. For the model, we have these three filtering equations that are visualized here. Um, these formulas are applied to each single depth pixel independently to yield the current state, the first time derivative, and the second time derivative. And from these three states, we can then predict the next frame and forward it into the update routine, as shown here. So the prediction can also be found here. This model, however, requires a stable window position on the torso surface, because um, we always need to see, to see the same pixel over time. We have one problem, however. The trend position estimation is not very reliable. Here in Magenta, we have the original window position used by the model, and the yellow window position is uh, coming from the new skeleton pause, from the trend positions here. And um, the trends usually jump between few pixels, and raising a hand causes large trend movements related to the original position. So the window gets misaligned, especially for the blinking pause. But uh, as I told before, the model requires a stable window position. So we need to measure the similarity of the window to the model. Um, to do so, we have a, a energy minimization term, where we have a occlusion mask, the prediction from the model, and a range of different window positions that I will show in the next slide here. So we have the input frame and the joints. And from the original window position here in magenta and the new window position in yellow, we uh, compute several candidate windows here for the extreme cases. And with these candidate windows, we uh, compute an occlusion mask and evaluate the cost function from the model prediction. And uh, with the evaluation of the cost function, we then obtain the best match so far. Okay, what we now need is to compute the occlusion mask. How can we compute this? Um, we have the input frame and the model prediction. And by simply taking the difference of both images, we get um, similar regions, a flat surface, and um, uh, regions that differ from the model prediction, we get also um, a large difference in this difference images. And simply taking the threshold now gives us an occlusion mask. And um, as you can see here, we have some shadow effect, but we need to expand the occlusion mask a bit to also address the issue of these shadows here. Okay, with the occlusion mask, we now can do occlusion recovery. How do we do this? The idea is to cut out a patch from the model using the occlusion mask and fit it into this region that is occluded. But we need to take care that um, in the input frames we have the elevation according to the respiration and the movement. So, um, let's start with the input frame. We cut out the occluded regions. Then we filter the um, input frame using our model and in paint the hole. And from the model, we have two cuts. One is the model cut. That is the, um, looks the same as the frame cut here. And we have a model patch. And here we apply, apply the same in-painting routine to the model. And then take the difference from the uh, patch and the in-painted region here to obtain a difference patch. And here, um, this surface area is elevated accordingly to uh, the respiration signal or the motion, motion or whatever. And then we simply add the difference patch here to this region and 
we obtain the recovered frame that we can then forward uh, to the update routine again. Now that we have the recovered frame, we can do the alteration signal extraction. As before, we take the mean of the chest or of the abdomen and subtract uh, the 90th percentile of the throat region here. And by subtracting both signals, we obtain a clear restoration signal. And without taking this difference, we see that the motion artifacts enter the signal and we don't have um, a clear respiration signal. Okay, it seems to work. Let's see it in action. Here on the left side you see the depth frames and the torso region selected as input for the model, which computes an occlusion mask like here and has this as output. And as you can see, it can successfully remove any occluding depth pixels. And from the difference of the mean of the chest region and the 19th percentile of the throat, we obtain this clear respiration signal. And in frequency domain, you can also see that it perfectly matches the ground truth, as indicated by the green bar. Okay, so this is at 2 meters. What about 4 meters? At 4 meters, we see that the input is much more noisy and our model is able to filter out most of the noise. And the noise still is visible in the respiration signal, but um, we can uh, get a permanent peak at the ground truth frequency of 0.17 Hz again. So let's see what a female user does. Again, it is at a distance of 4 meters <coughs> with noisy input images and a much cleaner output of the model and with the occlusion successfully removed and a clean respiration signal and a peak permanent frequency at 0.17 Hz again. Okay, for now we just have seen a couple of examples, so let's go to the evaluation of parameters. For the evaluation, we recorded a data set of 19 users three activities, mainly sitting, standing and drinking, at four distances of 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters and 4 meters, with two respiratory rates and uh, in total we have 9.5 hours of respiration data of different users. One very important parameter is the region of interest, namely the chest, the abdomen or the torso. Here I've plotted accuracy for the PCA of the region then taking the mean or the median of this region, the same, but subtracting the motion signal from, and uh, our model-based approach, on which I will focus now. As you can see, the highest accuracy is at the chest, and taking a look at the error rate, we see that the lowest error in breast per minute also is achieved at the chest, when compared to the torso or the abdomen. Then comparing it to the ground truth signal, we have the highest uh, correlation also at the chest and also the highest signal to noise ratio is achieved at the chest. And uh, since the chest is the optimal region, we will focus on this region now. An other parameter is the condition, namely sitting, standing or occlusion to the drinking gestures. And we see that sitting does not pose a problem for any of these methods. Uh, standing is optimal for the difference based methods. and uh, when it comes to occlusion, we see that the median is more stable than the mean counterpart, but our method again has the highest accuracy. And in terms of error, we also have uh, low error at sitting and standing, and occlusion increases the error a bit. In terms of correlation, we also have the highest correlation by sitting, and the signal to noise ratio draws basically the same picture. Okay, what about the distance? see that um, with increasing distance the accuracy drops a bit. Then also the error goes up with increasing distance, the correlation goes down with on higher distances and the signal to noise ratio also goes down on higher distances by sitting. For standing we see that also um, we have basically the same for the, um, for the difference based methods 
where we have lower accuracies with increasing distance, higher error rates with increasing distance, and the same for the correlation and the signal to noise ratio. Um, for occlusion, um, we also see the uh, decrease of accuracy with higher distances, the increase of the error rate with higher distances, the correlation is highest for our method, and the SNR basically shows the same. Okay, we can do remote spoliation detection now. So, what can we do with this? Well, we can, for example, do activity recognition. Here I have four different scenarios. Uh, one is paced breathing at 10 breaths per minute, a forced exercise scenario where I forced my participants to run down and up six floors of the Hölderlin building, a relaxing session where I asked the users to watch a video of landscapes with relaxing background music, and a speaking session where the users were asked to read aloud some text. And as you can see, in feature space, we can well separate the different activities. And this is also possible with only two uh, features. Okay, that's it. Thanks for your attention.